welcome back to another episode of What's in the Box. Uh, today we're going to cover the Fallschirm Jäger, uh, which uh, from Warlord Games, which is the World War II German Airborne Fallschirm Jäger translates into Paratrooper. Uh, for those that didn't know, <laughs> but um, from this one we're covering is a uh, most suitable period of World War II, mid to late. Um, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll cover that as we go into the models. Um, again, we're going to have a look at the plastics. I'm not going to go into the rules again uh, around how to use these and strategy around them because I'm not a German player. Um, I p play primarily British, uh, British Commando. Uh, I have just bought some paratroopers myself. Well, uh, British Airborne. But uh yeah let's get in and start looking at the plastics um again that's sort of the price for these 27 pound for 30 miniatures less than a pound less than a pound per miniature awesome deal so let's get the um cellophane off this get the cellophane off so it doesn't reflect off the camera and once this is off we will have a look at the box again so what the Falkshim Jäger has, uh, 30 hard plastic 28mm multi-pose miniatures. Now you usually get like 30 sort of 30 pairs of legs <laughs> um, and arms and torsos. Again, packaging with Warlord, you love it. You get sort of like a, a scenic in the background of them in action. And then on the back, what I always like about any miniatures is that they actually show you what uh, the miniatures are actually going to look like. I think it's really important when you're looking to buy miniatures that the companies actually show you what they're going to look like, especially when they're in sort of boxes that you can't see. Um, if we just go through here, some of the equipment we have on uh, Falsam Schulen Jäger. A 42 assault rifle, I've butchered that. Panzerfaust, Car 98K, MP40, MG42 light machine gun, stick grenades. Um, yeah, everything you pretty much need to build. Um, well, they're airborne as well, aren't they? So they're veterans. So you're going to... Pretty much one box is going to do you. <laughs> For your force mostly. So let's just get the plastics out and take a look. I mean, I've only bought one box of airborne. Okay, this is a bit tough to open. I don't want to damage the box. That seems to be the weapon sprues. And the base sprues are uh, stopping the main sprues coming out. So, interesting. But... Uh, Basically, I'm going to be honest, um, the other sort of boxes I've got from Warlord, I expected that to be weapon sprues. But, okay, here we go. Right. Wow. So, first thing we have a look at is... The instructions they kind of tell you what each weapon is which would be good for someone like me <laughs> who uh, really doesn't have a clue they kind of tell me what arms I need and what for what weapons and what suits what body some really good sort of descriptions there and how to paint them and how to make them look from again at the beginning of the war Volkshiga jump smocks were playing no camouflage so again going through the different ways you can paint them or make them look again i really do like these docu this like sheet that um warlord put in they do this for all of their units well all the units i've come across anyway all their boxes kind of tell me what i need to be looking at let's have a look at the plastic hmm. So 
So here we go. One, two, three, four, five. So we got five of these and they look the same. Yep, they are literally the same. Five, five sprues of the same. Uh, let's just start taking a look down them, shall we? Uh, which side should we flip them over? So here we go, it's a, it's a Panzerfaust. And then... G42 Assault Rifle. MP40. And again, sort of they give you all the different heads. <coughs> Sort of from the, the caps. Officer peaks. Plain helmet with goggles. Ones with canvases. Yeah. So here we go. There's ones with the canvas. Again. Trying to get some light on this. It's getting quite dark here now. Um. So yeah, with, with Warlord plastics, again, really good hardy plastics, good wear. Uh, one thing I did notice, that it does take a little cleaning up, um, is mould lines. Seeing quite a few mould lines on these, but could be worse. But you, you know what I mean? With the, with the World War II stuff, I always take that little bit of extra care anyway um, when I'm cleaning up my models. Yeah, the fantastic looking sprue. So in real detail. I like all the ammo pouches um, with Warlord games. So like mo you think about it, like most um, companies that release models, then they don't tend to go to this sort of detail, but I really do like it. Really do the nice, obviously their kit. multi-pose bodies there the legs aren't separate now which set was it where my legs were separate i can't remember but again we get five of these sprues so five with six on each but you can have loads of spares loads of spares on an lmg team uh you can build sort of your captain, your, your HQ choice on there as well. Your leaders. I mean, 30, 30, 30 miniatures for £27. That's an absolute deal. Absolute bargain. A fantastic quality. I mean, like you, you look at the detail on them. Um, so actually, yeah, while, while we're talking about sort of following you see all like the trench coats so from what i understand why this is mid to late is that um before the uniforms they used to basically be strapped in there was like a piece of material that used to come through their through their legs then and they used to like button them in or strap them in on the front so they were pretty much strapped into their their um drop clothes then but uh, in late later times they <laughs> they done it so they could get out of it if they needed to but that i believe that's why it's the mid to late as opposed to the early but that's e easy enough to do if you if you wanted to turn them into early you you could quite easily you know a bit of green stuff uh, again fantastic models really do i only um bolt action wasn't actually the first game i got into um it's test of honor followed by 40k because of my local sort of game store pegasus hobbies and games it was uh, one that was played more often and then Stu finally um managed to persuade me to buy a, a box of bolt action and to be honest the historic bolt action and that have taken over from sort of me playing 40k now um I really do look forward to, <laughs> to creating World War Two armies. But yeah, they're brilliant. 
Um, these are fantastic. And again, what's so good about sort of Warlord games, um, they don't for you're, you're not forced to use their miniatures if you don't want. There's another company out there that make models that you you can do it and you you won't be um, told like no you can't you can't use that model or that proxy. But when you've got plastics that are as good and detailed as this, I mean, why wouldn't you use theirs? Fantastic. Again, well, one thing I'd like to look at is um, look at some of the other German boxes, maybe. But again, these are all just five of these sprues. I mean, the detail on them. I, I, I keep I keep repeating it, <laughs> honestly, because I I really do like it. Even on the uniforms, like the creases. Uh, so my painting technique has actually changed recently for um, bolt action. Um, I was always using Citadel or Vialo, and I've actually turned to contrast. And the reason I've turned to contrast is literally because of all these creases. It sits so well, so well on it. Um, I might do a video actually just covering some of the miniatures I have painted for bolt action and some others and see just see how that, that's received. Again, a fantastic piece of kit. Really nice piece of kit. I mean, they, these were produced, what, two, 2015? So again, that's six years ago. Um, some bases and what else have we got on here? Ah, uh, just additional packs. Little grenades, alternative hands, bed roll. And then obviously the bases. One good thing as well I really do like about Warlord bases is that they've got this lip and it allows you then to apply some texture base without sort of it looking too high up. So it's a tiny smidgen lip, but it works really, really well. And also if um, not so much with the plastics, but if you have like metals then that have come on sort of like a mold base. When you glue them on, they almost go level with the lip. So when you add in like a texture base, it doesn't look too out of place when you're putting the base on. Because usually if I'm doing a metal, it's got like um, an oval base attached to its legs. I kind of like it to be part of the in with the terrain so it's not as noticeable. Um, but that's just me. <laughs> um, again, yeah, fantastic. But again, yeah, so that's the Falch, Uh German Airborne. Again, please leave in the comments any feedback, anything else that you'd like to see or me unbox. Uh, let me know uh, any way that I can improve my videos that, um, again, positive or negative feedback. I really don't mind. Um, I can take it. <laughs> Just give me some honest feedback. Uh, thank you all again for tuning in. Take care.